Friends in Christ, in the most recent encyclical letter of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, the Holy Father begins with chapter one under the title, Dark Clouds on a Closed World. And so focusing on trends that are hindering development in the world we live in. He mentioned some things that will be very familiar to us, sadly, in our culture today. He talks about things like poverty, like social inequality, gaps in the economy. He talks about ecological shortfalls, and so problems of caring for our common home. He talks about things like racism. These are all trends that are hindering our ability to live as men and women in communion, the way God calls us to live in the world around us. But he comes to chapter 3, and it's a complete change of perspective. Our Holy Father begins that chapter under the title, Envisaging and Engendering an Open World. What does that look like? What does it take to get there? And he starts off with a beautiful line. He says, human beings are so made that they cannot live, develop, and find fulfillment except in the sincere gift of self to others. And that passage he's citing is from the Second Vatican Council, from the document Gaudium et Spes, paragraph 24. It's one of the most frequently cited citations from the Second Vatican Council that we have. It's in many of the major encyclicals of the last 40 years. The man can only find himself through a sincere gift of himself. And it's called oftentimes the law of the gift for that reason. And it's very counterintuitive. You would think that the more I hoard things to myself, the more I hold on to them, then I'll be truly fulfilled. But the exact opposite is true. It's to the extent that I give my life away and and surrender everything in love that I'm truly ultimately fulfilled. And the one who teaches us that lesson most beautifully is Jesus Christ himself. He gave everything in his life. He gave his own body and blood to bring us into communion with the Holy Trinity. And so it is St. John the Evangelist at the Last Supper will write in his gospel, loving his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Not just the end of his time on earth, that was also true. But he loved them to the fullest extent that he had. He had nothing left to offer. He had nothing left to give. And so it is with the law of the gift. We're only fulfilled to the extent that we give ourselves generously to God and to those around us. But we find a very particular tension in the law of the gift in our gospel for this weekend. When we hear about this rich young man, And it's interesting, we only find out that he's rich, we only find out that he's wealthy after his exchange with Jesus, that he had many possessions. The first thing we find out about him is that he's a really good man, that he's kept all the commandments since his youth. He's loved his mother and his father. He's loved God. He's loved those around him. He's a good man. And St. Mark says, looking at him, Jesus loved him. He loved him because he was so good, because he was seeking eternal life. How do I inherit eternal life, Lord? And Jesus says to him, you are lacking in one thing. You don't have everything. You're missing only one thing, he says. Go sell what you have and give. Give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. We're told the man went away sad because he had many possessions. He he wasn't willing to part with them. He wasn't willing to be generous and to give and to be fulfilled in that way. And he misses an opportunity to become a true disciple of the Lord. How is God challenging you and I to live the law of the gift in a particular way in our lives in this coming week? There's a film that came out in 1993 called Schindler's List. Many of you have probably seen the film before, but it tells the remarkable true story about Oskar Schindler, who's born in Czechoslovakia, 
but he followed the German army's coattails into occupied Poland. And he very quickly espoused himself to the Nazi party, not because he believed in their ideals or he wanted to follow the way that they were living, but because he saw an opportunity for himself that he could make a lot of money. That was what he wanted. And so he very quickly was given charge of factories about 60 kilometers away from Auschwitz. And so he employed Jewish men and women who would go to the factories instead of going to the death camp. And he made a lot of money because he paid them next to nothing. But it was midway through the Second World War that Oskar Schindler became aware of the absolute brutality of the Nazis, that he was unaware of it before. He thought they were, they were just trying to exploit the Jewish people. But now he began to realize that their plan was to exterminate every man, woman, and child. And when he realized that, it shocked him into reality. It literally changed his own perspective, how he saw himself and what he was doing and how wrong that was and how he saw the people around him. And from that point forward, he began to use all of his contacts, all of his influence, and especially his money to literally buy back Jewish people from the Germans and employ them, quote unquote, in his factory. He was in fact saving them and giving them the path to freedom. He was risking his life by doing it. Two times he was arrested and accused of trying to to safeguard and to protect the Jewish people. And twice he was able to get himself out of it because of his contacts and because of his money. But it's the end of the film that has that chilling scene where Oscar Schindler gets out of this car that he drives up in, this very expensive car. Him and his business partner, Stern. Stern has worked with him to save over 1,100 Jewish people from the death camps. And he turns to Stern, and it's the end of the movie, the, the end of the war has happened, and the people are filtering out of the factory. There, there are hundreds and hundreds of people that are finally safe and are leaving in freedom. But Oscar Schindler turns to Stern and he says, I should have done more. I could have done more. He says, I spent so much money, you have no idea. And Stern tries to reason with him. He says, don't be ridiculous. There are generations of people that will be alive because of what you've done here. But Oscar Schindler won't listen to a word of it. He says, this car we drove up in, that's 10 more people right there. I should have sold the car. Why did I keep it? And he rips the pin off of his lapel and he holds it up in the air. He says, this pin is gold. I should have sold it. I could have got two more people for this pin or at least one. And the point of that scene, of course, is not that anyone accuses Oscar Schindler of not having done enough. He accuses himself because he realizes and recognizes even at that point, the law of the gift the true fulfillment and the development of the human person is found to the extent that we generously give ourselves away. And we're called to give everything. There's a very powerful scene that I would close with from the Acts of the Apostles. In the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, many of the people were selling their property in the church and they were giving that money to the apostles to build up the church and to help those who were in need. Now, no one was compelled to do that. You didn't have to do it. People were generously doing it because they wanted to. But there's one particular couple in chapter 5 of the Acts of the Apostles, Ananias and Sapphira. And they make a deal with each other. They say, let's sell our property, but we'll keep a portion for ourselves. We won't give all of it. We'll give only some of it to the apostles, but we'll tell them that we gave everything. And so the first one to come is Ananias by himself. The husband comes and he gives the money that he wants to give at St. Peter's feet. He says, here it is, it's everything. And St. Peter says, everything? Ananias, you have not lied to men, he says, but you have lied to God. And hearing those words, Ananias drops down dead before St. Peter. 
Now men come and carry his body away. And a few hours later, his wife, Sapphira, comes in, not knowing what has happened. And St. Peter asks her, have you given us everything? And she says, yes, Peter, we gave you everything. And St. Peter says, the footsteps of the men who carried your husband out are coming in now. You can hear them. They will carry you out, he says. And she drops down dead. Now that scene, as chilling as it is, is on a mosaic in St. Peter's Basilica above one of the side altars. You might ask yourself this morning, what on earth is that scene doing in St. Peter's Basilica? Of all the beautiful things that we read about in the Acts of the Apostles, all the acts of heroic virtue, all these acts of kindness and love that we find in the Acts of the Apostles, why on earth would that scene be in St. Peter's Basilica on a mosaic? And the answer to the question is because of its location. It's located directly across the entrance and the exit of the sacristy of St. Peter's Basilica. And so every single priest, whether he be a cardinal of the church or a newly ordained priest, every single priest that comes out of that sacristy about to celebrate the Eucharist, the very first thing he sees is that mosaic. And he has to ask himself in his heart, have I given everything over to God? Or am I holding back something of myself? Have I given God everything? My brothers and sisters in Christ, that's a question not only for the priest to ask, but every single one of us that approaches the altar of God, every one of us that approaches this mystery of the Blessed Sacrament and our Lord who gives everything to us in his body, in blood, soul, and divinity. We can ask ourselves, have we given everything? Not because we fear dropping down dead, but because we want to give, we want to love. We want to listen once again to the words of Pope Francis in Fratelli Tutti. Human beings are so made that they cannot live, develop, and find fulfillment except in the sincere gift of self to others. May we give generously and live the law of the gift in our lives this week, in the way that we live and in the way that we love.